everyone, it's Hannah and uh, the other day I was browsing TikTok, you know, as you do, and I came across a video of someone mending a dress using a speed weave. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So um, I looked in the comments and saw that you can't get them on Amazon um, and that you can tend to only get them from like eBay or Etsy. So I took to Etsy and found this one. I'll pop a link in the description box below. But the day that I received this, Knit With Attitude started stocking them in their shop and that's a local yarn shop in London. So I'll pop that in the description box as well because this came from the Ukraine and took a few more weeks to arrive um, than I imagined Knit With Attitude will. But essentially what this nifty little tool is, is it helps you um, darn your knits and also just non-knit fabric as well. Um, so yeah. I think it will come in very useful. The shop I got it from was in various sizes. This is a smaller size with 14 hooks because I thought it will do the job for what I need it to do. Um, and if I find that I use it a lot, then I can always get another one or whatever, but one is fine for now. They're not the cheapest of things in the world. Apparently they were heavily used in the 1940s and were um, created in, I believe, Lancashire, Lancashire in the UK, could be wrong, um, but they were used heavily around wartime and after wartime and then yeah so I think these are um, reproductions you can find some original speed weaves on eBay if you look if you're looking and you might be able to snag a bargain that's up to you I hate the pressure and stress of eBay so I just went to Etsy so here are a couple that I've done on this sock this sock had two holes uh, this was actually the first one I ever did and it's surprisingly neat and tidy I used tweed yarn for this which was much more difficult to do because it's all lumpy bumpy but still looks kind of nice I had two massive holes in this hat which I have since woven over so now I can wear this hat again and uh, yeah I try and do it in somewhat color coordinating yarn I won't be for this tutorial um, for example this is the sock and this is the yarn I'm going to darn it with just so you see it a bit easier um, but you can also use matching yarn from the same skein if you want and then it's not quite so obvious. So what you are going to need for this is a speed weave of some form, a darning needle of some form, a pair of scissors of some form and your sock with a hole, oh excuse me, your sock with a hole in it. So let's go. Okay so this is my sock. Behold the hole in the sock. I know, I've barely wore it and it already got a hole in it. So, um, this is the speed weave. So it comes apart like so. You've got an elastic, oh, excuse me. You have an elastic band around here. You've got all your hooks. This one has 14 hooks. And you have your disc. So, to secure, disc inside the sock or whatever piece of knitting you are repairing. Okay, so the disc is inside there. Just need to readjust the elastic band. Put it. I pop it over the hooks. I don't know if that's where it needs to be. And I try and line up, line up the hooks with the direction of the knitting. So it's not on a skew. And attach that on. There we go. Got a bit of a bit of a gap all the way around, and yeah. So the yarn that I'm using to repair does not match. Um, I believe this is Hedgehog Fibers, and this was a sock blank by um, Stranded Dye Works in her naive watercolor colorway, and then this is a Hedgehog on their sock, which is yeah, not my favorite yarn to work with, but you know we'll use it. And then I also have. A darning needle because of course. So threading my darning needle. So to make it a little bit easier I try and stand up the hook so they're somewhat upright. Um, I just use my needle to help me out with that. You can use these little loops up here and make try to make them stand up. Once again this is not science, this was not in any instructions. It's just easier to hook things around when the hooks are facing upwards. Okay, so we're going a few rows below, so three rows below and maybe three stitches across. And 
I'm just going to pick up one leg of that stitch and then pull it through the oh, hook to pen leave a bit of a longer tail and then hook it round the nearest one or the one that lines up the closest and then go on to the next stitch and pick up a leg and continue across Okay, so now we are here. I've done my best to try and make it as straight as possible, but hey, we're mending something by hand. We're not trying to make it look perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim off the tail of this. Um, the only length you need really is enough length to weave it in uh, afterwards. But I was just do a bit extra anyway because I'm overly cautious about things. I'm gonna take a bit more length of this because now this is what we're going to weave with. So I'm overly cautious about how much I have because I haven't worked out how much I need. You don't actually need that much, but I haven't worked it out. So you want to lay your hooks back down and you will see that one side of your loop is up in the air. Fantastic, that's what we like. So you want to pick up a stitch on this side around where you started your warp. Now we're going to start weaving. So pull pull a length through and then you're going to go through that first layer of loops. Um, I bring my needle down like this as I go to make sure that I'm not going through any of the strands of yarn, especially if you're using quite a splitty yarn, which if I remember correctly, this yarn does like to split. So you want to bring it down as far as you can. I then use my needle to kind of push it down. Then you want to pick up a stitch on the other side. I'm not left-handed, so why I'm doing it left-handed, I do not know. And bring it through. And then you're going to flip your hooks over. And now the other side is sticking up. So then you're sewing straight through there making sure you're essentially going up and over the opposite of what you did before. I don't know if that makes sense. And then I don't know why I bring my needle down now, but I just did. Pull it through. And once again, whoop. And that's it, basically. So I then sew through the next stitch on this side. Flip this back across. The other loops are showing and I'm sewing back through. And 
And that's it, essentially. You're just weaving backwards and forwards over the top of the hole in your knit. It's really fun to do. Okay. Picking up a stitch on the other side. This is hard to do with the camera in the way. Flipping the hooks back across and sewing back through. Pick up a stitch on the other side. I'm sorry that this isn't perfectly in focus the whole time, but trying to see what I'm doing whilst also holding it in front of a camera. And just keep going, basically. I'll be back in a minute to uh, show you what the next step is. So pause here and keep weaving and then I'll be back and I'll just be closer to the top. Okay. So we are done. I don't think I could fit any more through there. I'm just going to catch this on this other side. It's kind of difficult because these bits have felted a tiny bit. Maybe I've worn these for longer than I thought, but in my head I hadn't worn these for long before they got a hole in it. Anyway, so this is my patch in all its woven glory. Like I say, it isn't perfect, but you know what? It functions. So now we've got to get this off. Um, once again, I try and stand up my hooks. Theory being, it's a bit easier to unhook something if the hooks aren't lying down. But once again, I don't know if there's logic in that. And then take off your elastic band. Oh, still has a needle attached, smooth. Take out my disc. There we go. And then you just unhook this. So, like so. You see, because I've stood the hooks up, they just stand up much easier. So then I just put this back together so I don't lose any part of it. And the Etsy shop I got this from included some extra elastic bands, which is good. Um, obviously they're quite essential. So now all I have to do is take my incredibly long end. Like I said, I was overzealous. I always am with how much I need. Um, da -la 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 -la. So then I'm just going to sew along this edge and attach it to my sock in the best possible way. So pick up a stitch, pick up a loop. Rinse and repeat.
going to take the yarn through to the other side and I'm going to take all of the other ends through to the other side as well because that is where I'm going to sew them in so they can't be seen. So now you can see that this little hole is all covered up, all the stitches around it are all picked up. Um, what I have done on some of my other things I've darned is I've sewn around the outside of the hole. I've since learned that that's not necessary um, so I won't be doing for this one and so then yeah you just weave in all your ends like you would on your regular knit and then I'll be back to show you how it looks. And there we go. I won't lie not the neatest I've done, but I also haven't darned on camera before, so yeah. Now the hole is mended and I can wear the socks again with its twin. They're definitely, this pair of socks is definitely sisters, not twins. They're from the same sock blank, so yeah. All mended. So if you don't want a stark contrast in yarn like I have done here, you can always use some leftovers of the matching yarn to make one that isn't quite so obvious. Um, this is done on a heel of a sock and I had some of the yarn left over. It doesn't require much at all, so yeah, that's what happens if you make one that's a bit more matchy-matchy. So I have popped a link to the Etsy shop that I got my speed weave from, um, but the day that I received mine, I also noticed that Knit With Attitude in London have started to stock them, but they're um, there's this wooden, the disc instead of plastic, so I'll pop both of them in the description box below if you're interested in getting your own. Not sponsored in any way, I just wanted to share it. So, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, leave a comment, the usual shebang. Feel free to subscribe, and uh, yeah, social media links can all be found in the description box below. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.